Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video about medical school. This video is going to be about how you can have success at medical school, whether that's in learning the massive amount of information that you're going to need to learn, whether it's revising for exams or perfecting your exam technique for OSCEs, anatomy exams and multiple choice exams. So I'm going to just give my tips that I've accumulated so far. I'm in my third year, so I've done the preclinical part of my course. I haven't done my placement years yet, so I can't really comment on that. But yeah, like I said, I'm just going to be telling you things that I've learned so far that have helped me to improve my grades over the years. Also, I should say as a sort of disclaimer, I'm by no means the smartest medic in the world or anything and obviously I'm still perfecting my techniques this day. These things are just things that have helped me, they might not help you but I just thought I'd share them. My first tip with medicine is to make sure that you understand content as you're doing it. So I really do believe that understanding is what underpins your long-term memory of a topic. So as you're going through it and you're sitting in the lectures and you're making your notes, if you have questions or you have things that you don't understand, it's important to address them sort of immediately. So maybe that evening when you get home, you could like look up something you weren't sure of, or you can make use of the lectures and ask questions at the end of the lecture. If you have any sort of workshops or seminars, you could take the opportunity to ask questions then, talk to your peers about things you're not understanding, because if you address your issues at the time, they won't all build up and you'll find it a lot easier to understand the content in the future because often the same kind of concepts will crop up. So if there's something that you're really not understanding, then it might just keep coming up and every time if you just brush over it and think, oh, I'll revise that, I'll understand it eventually, you're not maybe gonna be making the most out of all of the lectures you're having. I also think when it comes to revise, you have so much content that you need to go over that you don't wanna be sort of using up your time by really like trying to figure out what something means and you already want to have the strategies in place for you to just quickly understand it and go over it and move on. So for me like the function of the kidneys and what goes on in all the different tubules like proximal distal tubules and the loop of Henle that was something that I kind of struggled with in that I did understand it as we were going through it and I just kept being like yeah eventually I'll sort of come up with a way of remembering it but actually if I had have come up with that way to remember it early then Every time it came up, I wouldn't have had to sort of sit and really think about it. I would have already had a strategy in place to just think, right, um, the proximal tubule, I know that that does this and this and this, and I could just move on. Because when I came to revise, I had to really kind of like think about how I was gonna learn it. So yeah, try and stay on top of not only making your notes, but actually understanding everything. So that when you come to revise, it's gonna be a lot easier for you. And these things you didn't understand or didn't learn properly before won't come back and haunt you. My second tip is to make friends with medics. I'm very lucky in that I've always lived with medics in my house and my two best friends at uni are actually medics. I mean, there's pros and cons. Obviously, it means you do spend a lot of time with these same people, but I really do think there are benefits in even if they're not your best friends, just chatting to other, other medics and having people that you can contact. Firstly, because if you ever get stuck with anything and really confused and it's exam time and you maybe you, you can't really contact a lecturer because it's getting too late and it's the night before the exam, then it's good to have someone that you can just quickly talk to and be like, look, can you just quickly explain this thing to me? It's also good in that when you're revising, you can test each other on different things and it's, it's very different testing someone else on a topic that you also know a lot about because Obviously you can get like non-medic friends and family to test you but they won't really know what's difficult and what's not so you might just find that it's really easy to answer any questions they ask you whereas if you get a medic to do it they are going to know the things that are challenging and they can ask you questions on that and make sure you really understand it. Thirdly is that just in general and this goes for any course other people can really help you in the way that they learn things and the way they remember things so when we were learning the ECG leads back in first year I think it was my friend made up a dance to help us remember what electrodes were involved with which limb leads she also made up this song to remember the nerve roots of the muscles of the um, forearm and something like that was just really cool for us to all then learn and then we could all do it together and it would help everyone to remember it. And lastly, and this is something that definitely improves me a lot, is doing a lot of OSCE practice on each other. So it's all very well when you learn a new examination to practice it on a family member or a non-medic. So like I would practice all of the things we learned in clinical skills on my boyfriend. The day after I'd learned it, I'd be like, right, I'm gonna do a respiratory exam on you. And this does have its benefits because obviously it's good to practice on someone who doesn't know what's coming. 
um, and it's so it really tests whether you're you're explaining well what you want the patient to do because they just have no idea what's coming next but um, I think the benefits of practicing it with other medics is that they can ask you again like I've said before they can ask you questions so they can be like right what are you looking for what could that be a sign of and what are you doing now and they can really get you to explain everything you're doing and check that you're actually doing everything properly and you're doing it for the right reasons and you know what you're looking for and my OSCE grade I don't want to like attribute it entirely to this because it could just be that I like revise better or I just sort of improve my communication skills but in second year as opposed to first year I practiced with my friend a lot more for OSCEs and like we just did them over and over again on each other like the different examinations because it's all about muscle memory and if you just know what's coming next you're not having to stand there and be like right okay so I've listened to the chest now what do I need to do you just know what to do without having to really think about it so I think that was really valuable in boosting my markup a lot in the OSCE and also finally it's obviously nice to have people who are in a similar situation to you so they can relate to you when it all gets a bit tough and you're struggling a bit it's nice to have people that really understand what you're going through okay my next tip is to really make the most of any clinical experience you get especially in the preclinical years when you're not going to be on a placement like you're only going to be sort of getting bits and pieces of clinical experience here and there um, really make the most of it and I think this is something that I've grown into and obviously you are going to be nervous the first time that you're speaking to patients and you're examining patients like the first time you ever do something it's going to be scary but the thing is patients will know that you're not necessarily the most confident and they'll know that you're not meant to be a doctor if you're explaining it properly to them that you are a first year medical student or your second year medical student, they're not gonna expect you to be a doctor. And neither will the, uh, like the doctors and the teaching fellows that are around you, they know that you're gonna make mistakes. So don't be scared of making mistakes. And something I've found that's good is um, if there's an opportunity to do something or an opportunity to go first at having a go at something, I now just try to just say yes and take it because often if you sort of sit back and let other people do things and take the opportunities when they come, then worst case scenario is it, you won't actually get a go because maybe you'll run out of time and then you will have just spent that time in the hospital like watching other people do things but not doing them yourself and also if you're in a group of other medics and you're watching each other I quite like going first to do things because people will expect you to make mistakes because you're the first one to do it once everyone's had a go they're then going to start thinking right we should all know what we're doing now so I always like to take the opportunities if I can and I like to go first doing things so that I don't miss out on having a go and so that it won't matter so much if I forget a few things or make a few mistakes. Okay, so my next tip is to literally learn everything. And this sounds silly, but you really do need to know all the little details. This might just be for Nottingham multiple choice question exams, but I remember my first year after I'd done all my lecture notes and I was revising, I would condense down my notes. So I just cut out bits of information I didn't really think were relevant. So I made my notes a lot shorter, a lot more condensed, but what I also did was I cut out some of the little details that were actually important. And in the multiple choice exams, these little details are really important to be able to rule out certain answers. So there's a few like little facts that like, if you know, you can just rule out like loads of the answers and then you'll just have the right answer in front of you. Whereas if you have a kind of more superficial, less detailed knowledge about things, when it comes to multiple choice, you're gonna recognize all the answers that come up and you're gonna sort of be able to convince yourself that all of them are right. So I really do think you need that depth and that detail to be able to distinguish a right answer from a wrong answer sometimes. And I think that does make a big difference between getting maybe like a 2-1 and getting a first. So my next tip is to think carefully about how you want to take your notes. So note taking for me was like a bit of a struggle. I always, I sort of knew that I was doing it wrong, but I carried on doing it wrong. So learned from my mistakes. So basically in first year, what I would do is as the lecturer was speaking in my lectures, I would try and write down everything that was on the PowerPoint slide. And my second priority would be actually listening to what the lecturer was saying. What I think would be better in hindsight is to properly listen to the lecturer and just sit and like take in the lecture and don't worry about taking loads and loads of notes. Just listen and just think about what's going on. Maybe jot the occasional thing down if the lecturer says something like that adds to the PowerPoint slide. And then in the evening to go back 
and write up the lecture in full and add everything that the lecturer said. So then you've got a full set of comprehensive notes and you've actually sat and listened to the lecture and taken it in. When it gets closer to exams as well, I think that making flashcards and posters is really good to be able to actually learn to recall information because if you're just like making notes quite mindlessly and just looking over your notes, then you're gonna be having like a good recognition memory. As you're going through, you'll be thinking that you've learned it all because you'll be recognising everything, you'll be going, oh yeah, I remember learning that, yeah, I remember that, I remember that. But if you actually practice trying to recall it out of nowhere, then it really shows you the holes in your knowledge. And I think that's really important for multiple choice exams as well, because if your memory is sort of more recognition based, then when it comes to looking at the, the choices in a multiple choice exam, they will all, like, you'll recognise all of them and it'd be really hard to distinguish ones which are very slightly wrong to those that are right. Whereas if you are able to actually just recall information, you will know, you'll be able to eliminate the other options because you'll know what's right, like, you will just know it. And I think that's really helped me, like, the times I've made proper flashcards and I've been, like, practising recalling information, they often tend to be the exams I do a lot better in. On the same topic of multiple choice questions, my next tip is to just trust your instincts. There's been so many times where I've put an answer and I've been really confident with it and then I've gone back through later to check all my answers and I've changed them because I've convinced myself that I must have been wrong the first time round and I've changed it to something else and then I come out on the exam and check in my notes what the real answer was and it's always the first one I put. So this isn't something to always go by because often you will actually remember details and you'll be able to change an answer to the right one because you'll know that it's right but you have to be really confident to change an answer because I really do believe that like there's an element to that sort of subconscious memory that you get when you have an instinct that is going to be right. So be careful when you're changing your answers. Make sure that you're really sure the thing you're changing it to is right because it's such an annoying thing when you come out and you realise that you changed like five answers to be wrong when they were originally right. Okay, uh, my next tip is to do with learning anatomy. Now, I think the biggest thing I can say about this is just accept that you are never going to know it all and it's so hard because I think most people at medical school are similar to me in that you don't like going into an exam having not learned every single thing in so much detail because that's that's the way I've always been with GCSEs with A-levels I always go in and I feel so confident because I know that I have revised everything and I've learned the whole syllabus but I just don't think it works for anatomy. Like there's so many tiny little details you could learn. I mean, I'm not saying cut out a lot of it. Majority of it obviously do learn really well. But I remember, I can't, oh, what was it that I was really struggling with? Oh yeah, so the night before my anatomy exam in second year, I suddenly realized like I hadn't learned all the lymphatics of every part of the GI tract. I hadn't learned where the lymph drains to like what lymph nodes it drains to and I remember suddenly panicking and being like right I've, I've got to learn it all and I've got to make all these flashcards and I've got to sit here and practice reciting it over and over again the night before the exam and I went to my friend's room in my house and she had learnt like bits of it but she just like said to me like look you're not going to learn it and there's just no point and I think that really stuck with me actually because yeah in the exam there was one mark for knowing the lymphatic system of one part of the body and I don't think I knew it but whatever it was one mark like I could lose that one mark or I could spend hours and hours learning the lymphatics of every single thing in the body at the expense of learning like the main part of the course and anatomy is important and it does help you with the rest of the course but the tiny tiny details if there's not a lot of like clinical relevance to them then I just don't think it's worth it. If you're gonna become a surgeon or you're gonna go into something where you're required to know that much detail, then you will learn it and like you will eventually specialise and you'll learn it. But at this stage, like second year of medical school or first year, I don't think knowing every single thing in the anatomy textbook is necessary. Okay, so my next tip is just about the OSCEs. So I mentioned this mainly already. My tip is just to practice as much as you possibly can. Obviously the best people to practice on are actual patients, but if you don't have much opportunity to do that, then practice on your family, on your friends, other medics, everyone. Just practice it again and again because that muscle memory, like I said, is really important. When you're doing things, try to actually, rather than just going through the motions, try to actually think about what you're doing. There's been so many times where in OSCEs, I've 
said so like one part of what you have to do in most examinations is to like inspect the area that you're examining so for example i'd be inspecting the abdomen but really i wasn't actually thinking about it i'd be looking but i wouldn't be seeing and i think this is a really common thing people do that they're going through the motions of what is required from the checklist but they're not actually doing it and I do it all the time and I have to like pick myself up on it. So actually think, what am I looking for? Like, can I actually see any scars? Can I see anything abnormal? Actually think about what you're doing um, and it will also help you like remember why you're doing it so that if they say, what are you looking for? Why? What could it be a sign of? You can then just like shoot back an answer. My next tip is when it comes to learning lots of information, something that can be good to do is to practice explaining it to non-medics, so like family members, whatever. So just like practice telling them about a concept in like lay person speak because I think it can become very easy to get so wrapped up in like the science behind things and, and to like know all the jargon. But if a patient was to ask you, okay, what is actually wrong with me? Or like, what's causing this symptom? Would you be able to actually then explain it in a way they could understand? It's gonna be a useful thing in future then when you're explaining things to patients to have that practice of how you actually go about explaining things that are, might be quite complicated but in a way they can understand and finally my last and final tip is to try to find ways that work for you to remember things because it's going to be hard to just have a photographic memory and remember a whole textbook or it's going to be hard to just recall all of your knowledge without coming up with some little tricks. So obviously some that everyone will use, like there's certain mnemonics in medicine. So like you just remember a word and then each letter of the word um, means something. So like if you're taking a history from a patient, then can most medical students will use the mnemonic Socrates. So this is to guide you when you're asking questions about a symptom. So I won't go through what it all stands for, but so for example, the S stands for sight, O stands for onset, C is character. So that's just to give you an idea. So that's one thing that is helpful, like mnemonics. And then other than that, you just got to try and come up with things that work for you. Like I already mentioned the song for the nerve roots of the forearm, the ECG dance that my friend came up with. There are also lots of little rhymes like the nerve roots of the diaphragm. So C345 keeps the diaphragm alive, things like that, which will get taught to you in medical school. But if you can make up your own, I just think it makes remembering things a lot easier because then um, if it comes up in, in an exam, what is the innovation of the diaphragm and the nerve roots? You can just think, Oh, phrenic nerve and diaphragm, that's C345, keep the diaphragm alive, got the answer. You're not having to just remember things out of like nowhere. So that brings me to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope it wasn't too long. If you have any questions about medical school, feel free to put them in the comments or I have my Instagram linked below, so feel free to follow that. Subscribe to the channel if you like these videos about medical school because I'll be making a lot more of them and about university life in general. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you very soon. Bye.